In a furniture repair shop, I often get broken chairs. This chair has a broken leg, and unfortunately, someone has tried to fix it before. I thought I'd show this chair to you because of how poorly it was repaired. You're gonna see how not to repair a chair, and I'm gonna take this apart, assess what the problem is, put it back together, and make this a rock solid chair. I'm gonna show you how. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. What I need to do is take that apart, repair it, and put it back together so I can get this chair in working order. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. I lay some padding down to protect the chair and then turn it upside down so I can take the seat up. Now once I take all the four screws out, this should just lift off. It does on these three corners, but here where it was repaired, someone's glued the leg right to the seat. So I have to take out a putty knife and separate these parts. to come apart. There we go. So we'll stand this chair back up. And wow, look at all that glue. This is a construction adhesive, uh, a polyurethane glue. So it's gonna take some work to get that off. And look how big this split is. I can get my whole pencil lead inside that. That's a pretty bad repair. I see a brad nail here, um, but there's no glue inside that, so this should come back together pretty well. This glue isn't releasing yet, and I see there's a screw coming through here. I'm not sure how deep it goes, so I'll take that out and see if that helps. There's some brad nails in the chair stretcher, so I need to pull those out before the joint will come apart. And if you haven't seen our video on how to remove brad nails and finishing nails, I encourage you to look at it. There are a few techniques that'll make this easier for you. It's pretty challenging to remove nails when you can't get to the head. So I've got some good play on that leg now. I should be able to cut that glue right on that joint and separate the leg. If you're not familiar with spreader clamps, they're quick grips that allow you to reverse and clip on like that. And now they go from a clamp to a spreader. So I'll just put one in here, another in over here. <clears throat> Let's see how this comes apart. There we go. There's some brad nails through here. And you can see brad nails sticking out here through this tenon. So it's uh, pretty messed up. But I've got lots of glue surface here and here. I'll put some glue on that tenon. 
and it should come back together if I can clean this out properly. That's a lot of construction adhesive. To pull out brad nails like this, you're best not to push them back through where they came from because you might end up splitting the surface there. What it's best to do is pull them through. Now sometimes they come through and sometimes they don't. Let's just see what happens here. No. So that one doesn't want to come off. What I'll do is just trim that close and then fill in the recess in the front. As you can see, a Dremel with a cutoff wheel really makes quick work of cutting off brad nails. They're really good for screws as well. I recommend getting one of these. You can usually pick them up for under $50. Uh, we've linked one in the Amazon store. If you click on the description below, you get into our power tools section, you'll find it there. It's at this stage in the furniture repair project where I take a look at why did the piece break to see if I can overcome that challenge and make it stronger. Now in this chair, this is a modern style chair and you can see there's no stretcher here and what that means is there's very little holding these two chair legs from coming apart. Most chairs have a stretcher further up here. So I can't fix that because that's the style of the chair. This is common in modern style chairs. Um, these are more popular in the 80s and 90s, um, and you might find the odd one today being produced this way. But they're typical chairs that have problems. I've repaired a number of them. Now, with not being able to fix that, when I look at it a little bit closer, there's also a screw that comes in the back here. And the length of the screw only goes as far as the existing piece that's holding on there, and not through here. So I can take a screw that's longer and get it into the meat of the leg. That will help. The other problem with this chair is the grain. The grain pattern is on an angle like this here, and as you move up the leg, it moves here and then moves here. So the, the grain isn't giving the optimum strength. It should be all up and down. So when the mortises were cut in here and with these angles, it was really compromising the strength of that piece of wood. So I'm going to glue this all back together, and I can't fix that grain pattern, but I think the addition of the screw right through the meat of that leg should help. Now normally I don't recommend putting screws into legs because the metal and the wood compete with each other, and the metal will wear out the wood. But the way this chair is constructed, this really is the only solution to help add strength to the glue that I'm going to be putting in there. And look at this. This is the construction adhesive. No wonder this chair repair failed. Here we've got some nice clean surfaces that glue could be applied to. We've got joinery that glue could be applied to, but the person just put construction adhesive at the top here. No wonder this chair broke. So what I'm gonna be doing is putting wood glue on these surfaces here. I'm gonna be putting epoxy in here where I've got some voids. And if you wonder why I'm using two different glues, I actually use five or six different glues in my wood shop. Um, it's important to understand the strengths and benefits of each. Um, I've got a separate video on that. I'll leave it in the description below. So let me get this cleaned up and we'll put it together. I'll clean out this glue with a very sharp utility knife, just a fresh blade, so I can slice through that glue and try and preserve as much wood as possible. And then what I'll do is come back with a scraper and finish off cleaning it out. I've now got glue cleaned off all the parts, so before I glue this together, I want to make sure it's fitting properly. And especially when you've got pieces broken off like this, sometimes they don't fit well. And I don't want to be doing that while I've got glue on. Because ideally, you've only got about 15 minutes with some glues. So I'll put this in here. Okay, so it's looking pretty good at the front here, but at the top here, it's not quite level. And what's happening is the wood fibers where they're broken off at the side here should be doing this. They should be integrating. And some of them are doing this. They're touching. And in some cases they might be starting to bend. So I have to clear out some of those in there, get them straightened out. So I get this perfectly level and it's in the exact position that it should be. 
Here's an example of one of those wood fibers. You see how it's folded over here? So that one just broke off. But there's a number of these that I have to either unfold or cut off to get that joint to come together well. I'll do this on both sides and then test it again. I've got the leg clamped in place and I'm replacing this two and a quarter inch screw with a three inch screw. And you can see here that that three inch screw will bite into that broken off portion of the leg. The first step is to drill a pilot hole so I don't split the wood when I put the screw in. The second step is to drill a clearance hole through all of the parts except for that broken off piece. This makes sure that when I screw it together, I'm not causing some friction between the parts and I get a joint as tight as possible. Then it's just a matter of putting in the screw and driving it home. With the clamps off, I can feel this is nice and sturdy. I can also see here, I've got a nice tight seam at the front, so I can use wood glue here, but further back here, it's not as tight. I've got a nice good seam here, so I'm gonna have to use epoxy in this back half and in that core. Here's a good example of glue squeeze out. I know I've loaded up the joint, I've wiped this off once, and it's still seeping out a little bit. That's just telling me that joint's settling in, and the clamp's got the right pressure. The glue on this chair leg is now dry, so I can take the clamps off. I've got a question for you. I've answered a few questions from Australia and Russia recently, and I'm curious about where our viewers are from. So if you can put a comment in the section below of what country you're from, and if you're really tech savvy, a little flag, that'd be great to see. I've also got a question for you about the YouTube channels that you watch. From around the world, I'm not that familiar with other YouTube channels that work on furniture repairs. So if you can post a name or two of channels you enjoy watching, I'd appreciate that. So let's take a look at this leg now. I've got a nice tight joint here. It's got a bit of glue, needs to be cleaned up. We'll put a bit of stain on that. And then in here, there's a bit of a gap. If I turn this around, you can see here. So we're going to need some filler there. There's a brad nail hole here that needs some filler. And then I'll turn this around. And you can see here, I've got a nice tight joint here and here. And there's a bit of a gap underneath here as well. That needs some filler. And then this piece as well. I've got a number of different fillers that I use. Uh, the particular one I'm gonna use today is a putty stick. Um, if you're curious about different fillers, let me know. I can make a video on that. And I still haven't got the knobs on my tool cabinet here. Got a little bit more work to do. So this one, uh, I think is going to give me a good match. I can touch it up after as well. And it's just a matter of rubbing it onto the void, back and forth, and working it into that spot. Then what I do is take a rag and just buff off what's there. Seems like there's a bit of glue or something here. Maybe that was the tape from the previous repair. Yeah, there's some glue, dried glue there. As I was filming this last scene, the lens just popped out of my glasses. Now, we're in the middle of a pandemic and all non-essential businesses are closed due to a state of emergency, so I can't get these fixed. Um, I'm gonna have to tape them up for now to finish off this video and see if there's a way I can fix them. I can't complain though. Uh, there are a lot of people that are having a hard time right now. Uh, my family's safe and sound at home and they're all healthy and I hope yours are too. Uh, so bear with me, I'll tape this up and we'll get back to the repair. Where I've got this larger void on the underside here, just rubbing that crayon there won't get it in as well as it should be. So I've got another technique I use with a candle. What I do is I heat up the wax stick with a candle 
And what that does is it softens it so that it's much easier to apply to the surface. So here you can see saves a lot of elbow grease. Let me do it again. I'm heating up the stick and then rubbing it in. So it hardens pretty quickly. With the wax cooled, I just come back and clean it up with a putty knife. And then I can rub it down with a cloth and we're good to go. This large filled area is underneath the chair and you're likely not gonna see it, but I wanna make it as invisible as possible. So I'm gonna pull out the touch up markers and touch it up, touch up the other areas, and we'll take a look at the finished chair. seat on we'll take a look at what it looks like yeah that's pretty good I've got the touch-up marker in my hand still so I'm just gonna touch up these two spots here this is where the chairs come in contact with the table when they get pushed in uh, sometimes you get bruising on furniture so that'll just make it less visible for the customer I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to make a bad furniture repair a good furniture repair and if you haven't subscribed yet, click over here and click on the bell icon and you'll get notified every time we make a video. Thanks for watching Fixing Furniture.